Good morning. I have several announcements to make, and then there's been some at it, and hopefully we'll get through them. We're starting just a little bit early. Uh, as noted in our bulletin, uh, expression of uh, condolences to the Rod and Kathy Tillman family. Uh, I had corresponded with them with a uh, email expressing our condolences to them, wishing they were here with us where we could all share a hug uh, and hold them in our arms. Also, yes. Uh, he had been sick, and, that, and that's all I really know how to elaborate on, that he had been sick. Whether it was expected now, I don't know that. I know Rod made several trips to Missouri where uh, Drew lived, but other than that, I don't know. Uh, Billy Oaks had a surprise this week. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, he decided he wanted to join the uh, wellness center over at Providence Hospital. Went there, and they told him he had to go do a permission from his doctor. Doctor wanted to run a treadmill. On the treadmill, after walking on it, uh, the heartbeat didn't show up right. They felt like there was some blockage. He went in Wednesday to have uh, the blockage uh, looked into. Uh, they got in there Wednesday and uh, uh, there were several places where he could have had a stent put in but there was the main artery on top of the heart and there's a name for it and some of you may know it but I don't know what it, the name of it is but there was a major blockage there. I happened to be with Billy when the doctor came in to share that and uh, I guess he thought I was family and because he showed me the x-ray that they had taken. So Billy had to have uh, bypass surgery. And that was on Thursday. Uh, he went, uh, uh, they had a little delay Thursday in that they found uh, on the x-ray when they took an x-ray for the uh, pre-op a spot. And they investigated the spot and it turned out it wasn't anything. And so he had the surgery and he had four bypasses. Now what's amazing to me, he went into surgery at four o'clock and cord to six. <laughs> I called Mary to see if he had went into surgery because he was supposed to have it at, at uh, 1230. And she says, well, they just called her and said they were through. Now, I can't imagine the technology that's in there. It used to be it was all day thing when they did bypass surgery. But he had to bypass and went by Friday to see Billy. He was in the, got to get my SICU. And uh, Billy was sitting up in good spirits. He sounded great when I called him Friday morning. And then I just got off the phone with him a little while ago. He's in a room. Uh, he's in room 3242 in the Mobile Infirmary. And, that, and uh, he's hoping to go to t home tomorrow, possibly. Uh, so... Uh, it's amazing what they can do on bypass surgery now. We need to thank God that people have developed their talents to do stuff like that. I uh, want to let you know that Martha Scott has been moved to uh, Cogburn on Dolphin Street. Uh, and then uh, great news for us, uh, Lloyd Parker's home. And uh, probably if... Uh, he could have, he probably would have walked up here and been in here with us, but uh, my understanding he's doing good. Uh, he's using the cane, he's not using the walker. Like Betty, Betty, you're using the cane now. And that's a two-fold thing, she keeps Travis straight with it too. <laughs> and that's all. Uh, wanted to bring, uh, also last night, in the rock, 35 of us gathered to watch the move Courageous. Everybody enjoyed it. And popcorn was great. Soft drinks were great. 
But the sharing of that movie, the laughing together in those times of laughter, and when it got serious, I couldn't get over how quiet it was in there. And if you haven't seen the movie, I would highly recommend that you see it. You'll end it. In fact, Joyce is the one that bought it and allowed us to use her copy of it. What a marvelous movie to build your faith. Uh, also, I wanted to talk to you about the air condition. You'll note in the bulletin, uh, we got some estimates, and we uh, decided last Monday to go with uh, Howard Air Conditioning. They would have did it this week, but the rain delayed uh, because they have to get up on the roof, they have to lift the two old units off and put two new ones up there, and it's just they couldn't do it because of the rain, but with the weather supposed to be pretty tomorrow, and they will do it tomorrow. And so we won't have to fight a little coolness. Probably it come uh, uh, in the neighborhood of 20. What, what it is, $20,000, uh, what it is, uh, we took out, there's a, a extended warranty, and it was about $2,200 for both units. And what it means, instead of having five years on the parts and one year on the labor, we're going to have 10 years on the parts and 10 years on the labor. And we felt it came out about $110 a, a year for each unit to have that. Also, we're going to look at uh, uh, trying to get some PM program going on those three new units and plus all the units over in the rock, which we have a number there. And so we'll look into that. And so today will be the start of it. Uh, in there I said about to off uh, set the cost of those units. Uh, if you'll look into your budget, and hopefully today we announced it last week, you'll be able to put some extra money into your envelopes towards that. Uh, I don't want it to fray from the other things that we're putting our money into, but we're looking for some extra money. Just mark your envelope HVAC, and uh, David will know where that money will go, and we will report on that periodically, uh, where that money, and I want to thank you on that. Uh, I have a good friend from Escataba. She's going to grace us with her uh, beauty and that uh, she wants to come up and share a couple announcements with you. Carla? It's Beauty and the Beast. Oh. <laughs> That's more like it. <laughs> well, we're here to uh, promote the Gulf Mission Center reunion. It's going to be June 10th through the 15th this year and we're looking for a really good crowd. Our guest ministry will be Linda Booth, and um, our theme will be Signal Communities Live Christ's Mission. And so we've brought over some brochures that also have a registration form on the back. So give some serious thought to, to come into reunion this year, because if you don't, you really miss a lot of good ministry and good fellowship, and uh, we have worked really hard to keep the costs down for registration. So this year for um, children six through, yeah, five through 12. I'm sorry, five through 12 is $60. Four and under, there is no charge. And for ages 13 through adult, it's 120. So we've kept it down really low. In order to do that, we have taken on the task of raising some money. Escataba had a fundraiser a few weeks ago, well, last communion, actually, and we raised $408 over there. So what we're going to do now is uh, we're coming over on the 18th of March, that's two weeks from today, and we're going to do the same thing here. We need your help. We need some people to help us during the 11 o'clock service to uh, get the dinners ready, but we're going to be selling barbecue dinners for $6. They'll be ready for you to take out as soon as you get out of church that Sunday, $6. And if you want to place your order today, that would be great so we know how, many, how much food to buy. 
Um, also, if anybody wants to offer to donate a five or 10 pound potato salad, that would be great too. And um, you can get in touch with me uh, after church and I'll give you our phone number and anything you want to. Oh, tell them about the, the $2,000 we're trying to raise. Oh, yeah. The, we're trying to raise, the normal cost per person to go to a reunion would be $180. And the way we're able to keep it down to $120 is through the fundraising effort that we're gonna uh, go through the mission center and actually help folks do. And that's, we're hoping to raise the difference in funds that uh, will allow us to keep that cost down. Now on reunion, I would say there are some here who went last year and if you talk to them, I guarantee they'll tell you that it was an incredible spiritual experience and you will not regret going. I enjoyed it thoroughly, even as the duties of helping her run it. Uh, was inspired to write a poem and I'm not a poet. So the morning devotionals were run by Tony Tristani. We had campfires with Candace Tillman and it, the talent show, of course, and it was just a lot of fun plus uh, spiritual experiences and good classroom discussions. And I really think uh, it's about the cheapest vacation you'll ever take. <laughs> it really is. And you'll love going. And we promise to make it worth your while. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, that reunion is June 10th through the 15th. OK. And we'll have them in the back. Uh, in the foyer and in the back on the table. Beth, uh, I have a redhead coming to join us now. Okay, John called me Friday and asked Debbie Lynn and I to help Phyllis while she's out for the next few weeks to help her with the women's department. So we've decided that we would like to meet next Saturday. Please, ladies, mark it on your calendars. Next Saturday at 1030, uh, bring a salad. All women are invited to attend. We want to talk about some of the projects that we're going to do for the year. Uh, so I want you to bring your salad and bring your ideas. And please encourage everyone to attend. I'm glad. Uh, Beth mentioned Phyllis. Uh, she's doing great. Uh, talked to her, and she expressed a concern that uh, she's got about eight to ten week recuperating time. And so uh, we discussed about it. And I want to thank Beth and Lynn for uh, helping in this time to uh, get the women's ministry off and running. Uh, uh, men, notice in your bulletin, Rick is having a meeting this Thursday at 7 o'clock. Is there anybody else need something to say? All right, Steve. <laughs>
Good morning. I hope that you will join with me in uh, the, your anticipation for this hour of worship. As we gather in our sanctuary here Sunday by Sunday, we all are reminded that we should come prepared to meet our Heavenly Father. But this particular service that the church has that we participate in once a month, the first Sunday in each month, has a very special place in your participation and that you will actively participate by reaching forth and taking those little small pieces of bread and those little cups of wine. I hope that you have come here this morning anticipating doing that and that because of your participation that you are preparing yourself for that experience. If you've looked on your program, you see on the back page there that this is World Hunger Emphasis Day. And I was thinking that, of course, the church has this, and we're emphasizing people in this world, underprivileged people that are in foreign countries mostly, that are hungry. But I hope that today that you come hunger, that you hunger for the Holy Spirit, that you hunger for that worship feeling that you have with your brothers and sisters that will lift you up and cause joy to swell in your bosom and maybe tears to come into your eyes as we worship our Heavenly Father and we remember the gift of His Son, the Lord Jesus. And that you hunger for that feeling. And that when you are given the opportunity, and as you reach forth and partake of these emblems, that you will remember how hungry you are and how these little pieces of bread and cups of wine are here to satisfy that hunger. I love each and every one of you, and I know that you love each other and that you love me. But none of us love each other as much as God loves us. And he provides this service here this day that we might be ministered to and that we might be filled and that we might know the satisfaction of having that hunger met. Shall we continue our service by the use of hymn number five in God's most holy presence?
Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can come together once again to enjoy the blessing of your Spirit as one body. We ask for your guiding hand as Jerry delivers your message today and that it will touch our hearts and we'll experience again that, that spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. said unto them, Behold, when ye have entered into the city, there shall be a man meet you bearing a pitcher of water. Follow him into the house where he entereth in. And ye shall say unto the good man of the house, The master saith unto you, Where I shall eat the Passover with my disciples. And he shall show you a large upper room furnished, there made ready. And they went, and found as he had said unto them, and they made ready the Passover. And when the hour was come, he sat down, and the twelve apostles with him. And he said unto them, With desire I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say unto you, I will not any more eat thereof until it be fulfilled which is written in the prophets concerning me. Then I will partake with you in the kingdom of God. And he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this and divide among yourselves. For I say unto you that I, that I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. And he took bread, and gave thanks, and break, and gave unto them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Likewise also the cup, after supper, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you.
Good morning. This morning, I would like to share with you the spiritual journey of the man who was born blind. As I read from the ninth chapter of John. And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he should be blind? And Jesus answered, It was neither that sinned, but it was in order that the works of God might be displayed in him. And then he said, We must work the works of him who sent me. As long as it is day, night is coming, when no man can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he said this, he spat on the ground, made clay of the spittle, and applied the clay to the man's eyes. And he said to the blind man, go work Go wash in the pool of Siloam. So that he went away, washed, and came back seeing. People came to the one born blind and asked him, How were your eyes opened that you might see? And, and he answered them, saying, The man who is called Jesus made clay, anointed my eyes, and said to me, Go to Siloam and wash. So I went away and washed, and I received my sight. And they said to him, Where is he? And he responded, I do not know. So they brought him to the Pharisees so he might tell them about this man who had given him sight. And again, therefore, the Pharisees also were asking him how he received his sight. And he said, He applied clay to my eyes, I washed, and I see. And the Pharisees said, This man, Jesus, is not from God, because he does not keep the Sabbath. And then they said to the blind man, What do you say about him, since he opened your eyes? And he said, He is a prophet. Then they questioned his parents, saying, How does he see if he was born blind? And they said, Ask him, for he is of age. For the parents were fearful to answer. They feared being put out of the synagogue. For those who believed were put out. And a second time, the man who could now see was called before the Pharisees. And they said, give glory to God. We know this man, Jesus, is a sinner. And the man answered them, saying, whether he's a sinner, I do not know. One thing I do know, that whereas I was blind, now I see. And Jesus heard that he had been put out of the synagogue And he went to look for him, and finding him, Jesus asked him, Do you believe in the Son of Man? And he answered Jesus with this question, Who is he, Lord, that I might believe in him? And Jesus answered him, saying, You have now seen him. He is the one speaking to you. And the man answered, Lord, I believe. And he fell and worshipped him. And Jesus said, For judgment I come into the world, that the blind will see, and those who see will become blind. Open my eyes, O Lord, that I may see what other glimpse of truth thou hast for me. 
Without my guiding help, thy guiding help, I cannot see. Open my eyes, O Lord, illumine me. Onward I go, O Lord, on Zion's way, ready to meet the call of each new day. New frontiers beckon me, known but to thee. And as I go, I'll pray, Lord, lead thou me. This hymn was written by Roy A. Cheville, and I feel that it is as pertinent today in our lives as it was when it was penned in 1950. As we gather this morning, many of us come with needs that are known and unknown. And as the needs of the blind man was met by Jesus, he will meet our needs also if we come before him. God's love for us is everlasting, and he always desires that we live in his love and mercy. For those of us who have needs this morning, let us look to the Father expectantly, for God's grace is available to all who come to him. For his love for us is unlimited and it's unconditional. Many times our minds are focused on our problems instead of where our help comes from. The spiritual truths are often right before our eyes, but we're blind to them. As Jesus admonishes, let us remember his words. Those who have eyes to see, let them see. Today, as we prepare to come to his table, let us focus on him, for he is our provider. Our theme reminds us this morning that the, blind, the man who was born blind truly received a new name. He became a follower of the Christ, for he had become a believer, and because of his belief, he received a double portion, a physical and a spiritual vision from Jesus. This morning, as we come to the table, to receive our portion, let us remember the sacrifice that our Lord made. He suffered the cross that we might be forgiven of our sins, so we have a chance to be with him in eternity. As we come to be with him, may we come with desire to make a commitment. How blessed we are each month to have an opportunity to recommit our lives edge. We may eat once. May we have too comfort in our walk? Do we need to move away from our comfort? Remember, sometimes comfort denotes stagnation. Or do we need to ask Jabez did for the Lord to enlarge territory? How does our comfort see what the Lord has for us? Does our cup need to be broadened? Brother Gilbert Remington shared with me an experience he had several years ago. He said that he was experiencing the Spirit of God in such a way that it had totally overwhelmed him. And he said to the Lord, Lord, I want more of you, but my cup is too full. It is truly overflowing. And he said, the Lord spoke to him and said, Gilbert, broaden your cup. I think this experience is good advice for all of us today as we contemplate our service and our ministry. And as we reevaluate our call, May we all remember that all are called in the service of our Lord and Savior. 
as it takes if our should be broadened. In Matthew and James, we're told that we're to be doers of the word. When the Lord left to be with the Father, he left us to continue his work. We have been admonished that we are not to sit back and with the fathers to be the doers of his word. Let us recommit our life, our time and talents this morning to our families, to our congregation, and to our community that God's purposes might be fulfilled in our lives. May each of us reach out to encourage those who need our love and our care, especially those who can no longer come and be in our midst. May we learn to say daily, others, Lord, others. As we pray for God's guidance in our lives, that's what my mother's advice was to me if I were sad and discouraged. She would say, honey, just always remember to pray. Others, Lord, others. And that feeling will leave you, that discouragement. Whatever your problems are will leave if you put your mind and your hearts on, on doing those things God has called you to do. And it does work. In modern day scripture, we find this commandment in the 59th section of the Doctrine and Covenants. Wherefore, I give unto you a commandment, saying, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy might, mind, and strength. And in the name of Jesus Christ, thou shalt serve him. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. These scriptures plainly tell us what we're to do if we're to find favor with the Lord. Our first love must be the Christ if we're to find love and everlasting life through him. And secondly, we are to love our neighbors as ourselves. As we reach for the emblems this morning, celebrating the Lord's Supper, let us remember that we have come to remember, rejoice, repent, and reconcile. We have come to remember the sacrifice he made for each of us as we receive forgiveness for our sins. We have come to rejoice because of the gift of forgiveness. He came that our sins might be forgiven, giving us an opportunity to be with him in eternity. We have come to repent, asking for forgiveness. Forgiveness for those things that separate us from our Heavenly Father. And we have come to reconcile for those words or deeds that we may be harboring in our hearts that keep us from being that dutiful servant. For Jesus told his disciples that as the Father loved him, even so he loved them. Your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. Now, may we prepare our hearts and our minds to receive his holy communion and may God bless you and keep you as you seek joy he so freely gives as we seek ways to serve him is my prayer this morning. As Jerry has reminded us, 
part of the purpose in which we have here this morning in partaking of these emblems is that we would renew our covenant that we made when we entered and were immersed in the waters of baptism. So for the next few moments as we prepare for this particular service of communion and partaking of these emblems, I'm going to ask that you would, that you might reflect upon the question that we had printed in the program here this morning. What is your covenant with God? What is your covenant with God? If you will, will you close your eyes and let's prepare for this service. Let us share in the singing of hymn 342. We're going to do something a little bit different here this morning. I'm going to ask you as the prayer of blessing is asked upon the bread and the wine that you might kneel but that you continue to kneel for both prayers will be offered back to back. There will be no break between the prayer of blessing of the bread and the prayer of blessing on the wine. So we'll only ask you to kneel one time. Also, the serving of the bread will also will be done and the wine back to back. We'll serve you the bread this morning and we'll come back front, take the uh, trays of wine and serve you the wine. There will be no break in that. So if you will, now as the prayer of blessings are asked on the bread and the wine, will you kneel please where possible.
When Wayne called this week, he asked me if I would take the disciples' generous response as an opportunity to uh, give a financial report on our standing. And I have some figures I pulled together from uh, the month of January, and I guess I would describe that financially uh, the congregation is in a, a good place. Uh, we started out, and these figures will be just through the month of January. I just have, I have February, but I haven't put them in yet. But January, uh, well, we started the first of January with a little over fifty-seven thousand dollars in our checking account, and we have increased that at the end of January to over sixty-one thousand, so about four thousand dollars increase. Our income uh, for operating expense local for the month of January was six thousand dollars, and then about thirty-five hundred dollars. Uh, was contributed to World Church, so uh, uh, a nice, nice contributions there. Uh, in our business meeting, uh, our last business meeting, it was decided that because our checking account was uh, at about sixty thousand, that we would invest in the World Church uh, savings program that they have. Uh, so uh, I sent a check last week to World Church for $30,000, and uh, that will be invested in an interest-bearing account, which we've, which we've not had in a while. So uh, that left us still with about $31,000. Uh, of course, as John was saying earlier, uh, about the time we sent off the $30,000 check to World Church, uh, we had a couple of air conditioners to go out, and so uh, we're going to pay about $20,000. I think that will probably be a check that will be written tomorrow. So that will bring us our checking account down to about $10,000. Uh, I'm sure that with the, the contributions that, uh, that will be made, uh, that we will be, uh, based on our history, that we'll increase again, bring our checking account back up, and that we will still be able to send more money and invest in World Church uh, savings account. So uh, uh, with that in mind, with our financial standing, I would like to read a couple of scriptures, and this is taken one from the words of Jesus and then from uh, Latter-day Revelation. And it says, and he gave unto them commit commandments that they should worship the Lord their God and should offer the firstlings of their flocks for an offering unto the Lord. And then from Latter-day Revelations, But remember that on this, the Lord's day, thou shalt offer thine oblations and thy sacraments unto the Most High. May the ushers come forward. Let us pray. Accept this offering, O God, as evidence of our desire to assist in the spreading of thy gospel. We know, dear Father in heaven, that there are those who give their lives and all their efforts to spreading thy gospel. And with those offering our offerings this morning, we wish to show our willingness and our desire to accept in this work. We pray that those offerings that we make this morning might be used wisely, that we might know thy will in the use of these funds, that they might go towards spreading of thy gospel, toward those who are in need and those who are in poverty. For these things we do pray in Christ's most holy name. Amen.
what a friend we have in Jesus. To each of you that I see in this house of worship, and to those that I see in my mind's eye at this time, I would offer up this prayer. Let us pray. Our gracious and loving Heavenly Father, we come to you today in the name of Jesus. It's good to be able to come into your house and have this time put aside the cares of life and the busyness of living. We're hurrying about, planning, preparing, fixing, organizing, and worrying about how everything is going to turn out. Even while we're here in church, those thoughts tend to drown out your voice and what you would say to us. We do want to hear from you because we need to be a nude today and to know we are in our walk with you. Guide us. Keep us from despair. And lift our eyes toward you so that we may see your face shining on us and walk in the light of your Son, Jesus. Comfort us with your presence, those who are living in the shadow of grief, shattered by the loss of a child, a parent, a spouse, or a friend. Give assurance to the, all those who are missing loved ones that the living and the dead are in your care in the certainty of being joined together in your everlasting kingdom is a reality. For some here today, this present moment is filled with disappointment or impairment or heartache. And their circumstances may be dreadful and filled with reasons for sadness or loneliness. They need you, God, and they need us and the comfort of being in fellowship with you and with each other. We do receive the uplift and encouragement from being here in your house. Help us to be sensitive to the needs of our brothers and sisters and speak words of encouragement or even give a sincere smile or a hug. We do care about each other and we want to show it. Our prayer list shows us there are many among our circle of contacts today with special needs in their lives and need your special touch and reassurance right now. There are numerous physical problems and we don't understand why these things come in our lives. People are tempted to question you, and our faith is tested, sometimes to the limits of our very being. There is a need, therefore, for your special grace to see them through it. You call us to do your deeds of mercy and peace, to feed the hunger, hungry, shelter the homeless, touch the sick with your healing balm, console the souring, visit the prisoners, welcome the stranger, and to bring the peace of Christ. Help us to respond to that calling that you give to each of us. In Jesus' name, I pray that our faith and our service for Jesus will not fail during these days. Amen.
Will you now join me in the sending forth of printed in your program? We have eaten together as brothers and sisters around our common table. We go forth to feed the world that it may be filled with love. This we do, remembering Jesus. We have been refreshed. We have felt, seen, and heard God calling our names as the Spirit has quietly come among us. We have praised God and celebrated the good news of Jesus the Christ. We have witnessed to each other of Christ's presence among us. We go forth to be God's presence in the midst of the world. Amen.